talk modifications. When you're doing a yoga mala, a lot of the moves you're doing twice in one sun salutation. So say you'd be taking your arms overhead, you'd be doing that 216 times. And that's a lot of wear and tear on your shoulders if you're not careful. Sometimes it's our age that stops us doing what we want to do. Sometimes it's conditions we have, injuries. Uh, we just have to work with the body that we've got and not wish that we had something different. A total pointless waste of energy. You know, let's just modify for the bodies we have. So that's going to take the form of maybe not always lifting the arms up in the air, maybe keeping the knees soft, that's always a good one, maybe not lifting up to full cobra or down dog. There's a modification for every single pose in your Surya Namaskar. Um, that said, let's get on with it. So the pose, the first pose we start with is Tadasana, basically standing up straight. Um, doesn't really need to be modified particularly, I think we can all just about manage standing up straight. The trick here is not to be too rigid, it's very easy as soon as your instructor tells you to stand up in Tadasana, we become very militarised, very upright, very regimented. Just keep some softness throughout, so the knees are soft, there's a little bit of give there. And you can relax the shoulders, sliding the shoulder blades down towards your back pockets. That lift of the core and just balance the head neatly on top. So far, so good. So the first move, we take the arms overhead. Now, if you're going to do that, remember to get the back muscles to lift. So you're keeping space around the neck so the neck doesn't get compressed. If that still feels uncomfortable for your shoulder joints, bearing in mind you're going to be doing it 216 times, why not, instead of doing this, bring your hands to heart centre? Perfectly good, perfectly good. And then when we've done this, or this, we hinge forward, we come forward into the forward fold. And that can be problematic for many of us, either for hamstrings or lower back. It doesn't always feel that good. So again, the way round is remember to keep that core lifted. Have a little give in the knees and you hinge forward. Remember to lead with the heart. And you come all the way down. You can bend the knees as much as you need to do. And remember to relax that head. It's really common to keep the head hovering in anticipation of the next move. Relax, enjoy, let the head go. Okay, so if you were doing that from your arms overhead, you could reach up and rather than swallow diving down, again, that places great pressure on the shoulder joints. We could take the arms up, the palms can touch, the belly lifts, we can bend the knees when we feel that slight tug and we can relax. And then we move from there into our half forward fold. So you could keep the knees bent here. I find it quite difficult to keep my knees bent as you must have noticed there. Shoulders back, lifting the gaze. If that's still too much for you, then hold on to your shins. It's all good. You don't have to have the legs straight and I would to be honest I'd recommend not having legs straight at all in the mala. You're going to be there a long time, make it easy right from the word go. Then you would fold again, again you can bend the knees and then you would step back to your plank pose. You can alternate the legs with which you step back first, we're not going to do any jumping back, that's too much for the shoulders again. So you could take a nice wide step back, plant the hands and move back. Now here, typically you'd be in your plank pose, but why not, if that's too much, just be on all fours, it's absolutely fine. And then from all fours, it's usually chaturanga, that's going to be way too much, way, way, way too much for yoga mala. You're just going to either do knees, chest, chin to come down, or lower the hips first, then allow the arms to bend. 
and come down. So again, choosing an option that suits you. Um, it's a lot easier to take a modification and plan it, know which modification you're going to take, than it is trying to do it on the hoof. Um, your breath will become agitated, your mind will be agitated. Sort out what you're going to do, all right, more or less from the start. So you have all your modifications in place. That doesn't mean to say you have to do them all on every single sun salutation. Shake it up a bit. And that way you'll be working different parts of the body, giving other parts of your body a time to rest. So if you are in your plank pose, to come down to the mat, remember no chaturanga, knees straight down, chest and chin straight down, slide forward. So remember, all fours exactly the same, chest and chin, slide forward, or lowering those hips. So just taking you through that again, because this is the pose that seems to cause the most emotional upset. It agitates the most, but you can let it go. Just choose one of those versions that suits you. So then we come to our heart opener and your choices here would be sphinx. Make sure the toes are untucked so we're not compressing the lower back. Nice strong legs, pressing evenly into the forearms, lifting the belly. So Sphinx pose is a good option. Or hands underneath the shoulders, keeping the elbows in, still reaching back through the legs, keeping the core lifted, a little baby cobra. That's plenty. What you don't want to be doing is relying on your arms uh, to crank yourself up into cobra. See how I've lost the neck if I do that? If you're gonna do cobra, Shoulders away from the ears. And then we move to downward facing dog from there. You have, hey, guess what, an option. If down dog is gonna to feel too much for you, you engage the core and you come up to all fours. So remember my body proportions means that my hands are in front of my shoulders. You might be more comfortable with your hands underneath your shoulders. So again, play with it. So that you could use instead of down dog, otherwise your down dog, remember we want to be efficient in how we use our strength and our energy, especially in the yoga mala. So we initiate that moving back with the head and the shoulders, then we get the arms involved, we tuck the toes under, we push back to our diagonal and let's let the leg muscles, the big leg muscles, do the heavy lifting for us. Normally we would hold this for five breaths. That's gonna to be too much for many of us. So we're just gonna hold the down dog for an inhalation and an exhalation. And to come out of the pose, we're not gonna be jumping forward. We're gonna be stepping forward. And again, here you might want to alternate which leg you step forward with. It doesn't have to be every time you have to alternate, but just remind yourself, oh, maybe this time I'll step forward with my left leg again, so we don't overtax any muscles. Now, the stepping forward can create a lot of angst. And again, that mental angst, which is likely to throw you off your concentration when you're doing your 108 sun salutations. So think of your modifications. Think, if that's a problem area for you, then let's plan around it. So you'll be in your down dog, your foot gets here and it gets stuck. Rather than swearing to yourself and getting upset, grab hold of the ankle and bring it forward. And then it's a simple question of stepping yourself forward here. That might not be possible. It depends on how flexible you are in your hips, how strong your core is. So it could be you step forward here, then you can always step forward here and then take another little step forward to the top of your mat. There doesn't have to be any drama involved here, no judgment. Just accept where you're at and enjoy the process. 
So I'll do that again. You're down dog. I'm going to shake it up a bit. Ooh, I'm going to step forward with my left leg. So I could do this. Or we're here. Or here. Okay. And then when you get back upright, then you do your forward fold again, which we've already covered, bending the knees, letting the head go. When we come all the way up, really root down into your mat. We want these muscles to do the heavy lifting of the pose for us. And again, you don't have to do the same thing over and over again. So traditionally, that would be this. Again, that's tiring for the shoulders. So another option could be, again, pressing into the mat through your feet. So you feel those glute muscles firing up. It could be, right? It's not a problem, is it? It doesn't have to be a problem anyway. But if all of that is feeling too much, and maybe you've got a cold on the day, or you have certain disabilities that limit how you move, um, there is a way around it. I actually have a cold at the moment, which is making me feel a little bit grumpy. Um, and when my head is down, you feel the pressure in the face. But there is a way around it. Hold fast. Secret weapon, a chair. <sighs> Chairs and walls make brilliant props. Never be without them. So what you would do, you would make sure you have a chair and it's wedged against the wall. If it's on your sticky mat, that's probably going to be enough. It's not likely to tip over, but hey, why risk it? So place it in front of the wall on your sticky mat. And here we go. This is, would be a sun salutation A with a chair as a prop. So standing nice and tall, inhale your arms overhead if you wanted to. Exhale, hinge you forward all the way back, placing your hands on the chair, release the head. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Now you would step back as if you were doing your plank. And then remember from here, you'd come down to the mat normally, but we're gonna move into our, a version of up dog, the heart opener. And then from there, engaging the core, we'd move back to our down dog. Inhaling and exhaling. And then we can just make our way back to the chair, extending the spine. Exhale and fold. And then inhale all the way up. Exhale. So, choose your modification. <laughs>